distinguished leaders of the UN organizations amongst us today. Your Excellency, Deputy Chairperson of the African Union Commission, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Ethiopian government and myself, I'm pleased to welcome you to this conference devoted to an issue which we consider very central to our development undertakings. In the recent past, we have seen how apparently unrelated policy decisions and shocks could, could wreak havoc to the global and local food systems. We are constantly reminded that not only countries are interdependent, but subsystems are also independent, interdependent, resulting in larger super complex systems. Climate change and extreme weather events pose the greatest challenge to food production and productivity. While every effort should be spent in preventing as many of the shocks as possible, we should also not lose sight of an equally urgent imperative that's building resilience. Here in Ethiopia, we recognize this fact as a country that has been subject to severe and repeated droughts and other forms of shocks. We not only recognize the need, but also are determined to the resilience of our economic, social, and political systems. For us, anticipating, adapting to, and recovering from shocks are essential to our future. We have approached the challenge in several ways. Let me outline in a very general manner what we have been doing in the recent past. First, in, 2020, in 2010, we have adopted a plan for the growth and transformation of our economy. It is the first in a series of five years plan which together will help us become a middle-income country by 2025. The plan consists of investments and policy approaches for enhancing agricultural productivity, expanding key infrastructures such as energy and communications, and promoting industrial growth. This embody our key strategy in enhancing resilience to shocks of many forms which is to build a robust and diversified economy. In 2011, we have enhanced the quality of our development vision by determining that the middle-income economy that we are building should also be green and climate resilient. In the same year, we have put in place the strategy for building a green economy. Major elements of our green economy strategy, such as rehabilitation of degraded land, afforestation, and reforestation, increasing crop and livestock productivity, do clearly contribute to social resilience. We understand that man has to be friendly to the ecosystem, and that friendship is very important for resilience. Since then, we have also developed strategies for building climate resilience in agriculture, water, irrigation, and energy sectors. Ethiopia's economy is still heavily dependent on agriculture and will continue to be so for the decades to come. Agriculture accounts for about half of our GDP and 80% of employment. From this fact, it logically follows that to be a resilient country, we must also have a resilient agricultural system. Accordingly, we have invested in raising the productivity of our small farmers, strengthening agricultural marketing systems, bringing more land under irrigation, and reducing land degradation by soil and water conservation measures, including biological measures for sustainable land management. 
Our people are at the center of all these investments. Our smallholder farmers and their families, the youth group, the women's group, and also the private sector is at the center of this agenda. The private sector makes important contributions to the successes in agriculture. At this juncture, I would like to thank our development partners for supporting us to pursue this agenda. I presume many of you are familiar with the Agricultural Transformation Agency, which we have established with a view to maximizing the contribution of agriculture to our development. The agency has benefited from the insights of IFPRI researchers. We have allocated 15% of our annual budget to the agricultural sector, one of the highest rates in Africa. We have also strengthened <laughs> we have also strengthened capacity through agricultural research and extension. In this regard, IFPRI's strategy support program has been helpful. These efforts are designed to result in a healthy and growing agricultural system that can absorb shocks and become more effective at meeting people's needs for both food and income. As we invest in building a stronger and more resilient economy, we also recognize that many poor households suffer from chronic food insecurity. For this support by our development partners, we have put in place a successful social protection scheme called Productive Safety Net Program. By providing largely conditional food and cash transfers, the program ensures vulnerable households who would have resorted to the sale of their important assets, trapping them to a vicious cycle. The program supports the creation of assets such as roads and irrigation schemes and uh, infrastructure, which enhance resilience of communities. In short, the Productive Safety Program contributes to resilience by creating and promoting personal and community assets. At this juncture, I would like to recognize the contribution of IFPRI researchers in continuously improving this social protection scheme. These and other investments and policy efforts have helped raise economic growth, improve food and nutrition security, reduce poverty, and we believe make us a more resilient country, better able to cope with shocks as they arise. We believe this helped us mitigate the consequences of the severe drought, which has been mentioned by the leaders here with us today, of the 2011 in the Horn of Africa, which was of the magnitude of 60 years recurrence period. We also recognize that there is more work to do. We need to do more to raise agricultural productivity, engage the youth in agriculture, strengthen the pastoralist and livestock sector, refine and strengthen our food and nutrition security, and social protection programs, adopt motor technologies, and build homegrown research and policy making capacity. Resilient systems are made up of resilient people. We work to eradicate hunger and undernutrition. We aim to create healthy and productive individuals, communities, and institutions. In all our endeavors, we are eager to share our experiences, and most of all, we want to learn from others. That's why conferences such as this are important. Here, policy approaches and programs will be subject to critical peer review and scrutiny. Insights and case studies are shared and experiences and best practice simulated. And recommendations and networkings are made. I am hopeful that you will be successful in all this. Enjoy your time in the capital of Africa, Addis Ababa, and I thank you. <laughs>